vlog and thank you for tuning in. Today is a highly requested video. I did a poll on Instagram and I asked what you wanted to see. This was number one and drag racing all of my cars eight wide was number two. So if this video gets a hundred thousand likes, I will drag race all of my cars side by side. Shout out to you Adam LZ for the idea. And you guys please give this video a share, a like, and if you don't already, please subscribe. After I talk about each and every single one of these cars, we're gonna do some driving clips so you can really hear each and every single one of them. But first, let's start with the car that started it all, my 1995 Nissan 240SX. about NV, my Nissan 240SX, I have to give a shout out to my first car, the one that actually got me into cars, and that was my 2005 Infiniti G35 six-speed manual. And that's the car that I started autocrossing on. That's the car that really got me into motorsports. And unfortunately, on the way home from the racetrack one day, I was hit, she was totaled, so she's not with us today. But because of that Infiniti, it made me love Nissans, and that is why I wanted to stick with the Infiniti Nissan family, where I ended up with a Nissan 240SX. But because I was in the Midwest, everyone was all about the American V8s, and that is where I started with a small block Chevy platform. And the 240SX back in the day was coined one of the perfect drift chassis. And of course, when I first purchased this car, she wasn't running right. She had a lot of issues, and it probably took me about a year even after moving to get kind of everything situated on her. I ended up driving her across country with no AC in the middle of the summer through a sandstorm with the windows up and everything I could fit in this car is what I brought with me to where I live now. And she made it. She choked a little bit through Arizona, but she made it. <laughs> I unfortunately had to park her for a while because I couldn't afford for her to continue breaking down. And I got sick of working in a restaurant. You guys know the story. I eventually picked up a camera and decided I was gonna completely and finally build this car into a drift car and learn how to drift. And the goal was in one month so that I could make TJ Hunt's drift event. And I made it. I'm gonna do my best to name sponsors on the cars. I don't want this video to come across very pluggy. I'm just super thankful because without my sponsors and really without you guys, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I hope that reads more as thankful than it is pluggy. The first mods that I did on this car was a rear dual caliper system with a Z32 brakes. I then accompanied her with a sicky handbrake. Then of course, after that was wheels. I went with NK wheels with necks and tires. That right there with a stock LS was plenty to initially learn how to drift. Then of course I needed more angle. I went with a full GK Tech front angle system, eventually upgraded to the rear arms as well. I welded the diff, upgraded the subframe bushings, slapped on some villain's axles, and she has been a perfect car. Eventually we put a cage in the car, upgraded to some Sparco seats with some OMP harnesses, gutted all the sound deadening, and decided to clean up the interior. So I have a full street faction, rear seat delete, door cards, heel plates, everything inside of here and then i also paint matched it to match the exterior of the car which is something i was super passionate about doing have a roll cage in the car the roll cage was painted a porsche 918 spider green to match the desert sage metallic match complement i should say and never actually changed the steering wheel because she's kind of my a1 since day one although she's kind of falling apart a little bit now to pop the hood also the wrap is done by extreme wraps designed by period correct and then brought to life by aws and all of this is reflective so at night the car glows it's actually one of my favorite things but i'll probably be taking the wrap off here soon because i want to go back to that clean look she's a little dusty because i didn't get a chance to clean her since the last uh drift day but she's a stock bottom end 5.7 liter aluminum block ls 243 ported heads fast intake manifold 102 millimeter throttle body fast fuel rails bigger fast injectors off the top of my head i don't remember i think they're 60 pounds t56 manual six speed i have mishy cooling on the car uh for oil cooling and power steering except you guys ask why you don't see me drift in this car a lot um with drag racing and circuit racing obviously there's a lot going on and i do want to get this car back out there asap i love drifting unfortunately there's an overheating issue right now i thought it's because there was a king to fuel line that was maybe causing the engine not to be able to cool down properly but i don't think that's the case i'm gonna try replacing the radiator with a two-way next and if that doesn't work and Unfortunately, I think the motor might be hurt. So I've been contemplating swapping the four-way stroke out of Mimi into here, but we'll get to that later. In the meantime, I love this car, Street Faction Bash Bar, tuned 
Wrangler Turbo Joe, Haltech ECU, wiring specialties harness, d shorks fuel pressure regulator, and a custom exhaust that I fabricated myself with the help of Sandy. So I love this car. This is the car that started it all. I remember when I first moved out here, I was working on this in an AutoZone parking lot. She's my ride or die. She's been my A1 since day one. I don't think I could ever sell her especially with how expensive 240s have gotten over the past few years. <laughs> oh, and then one thing, it's actually an Origin Wide Fender kit. They're 30 mil overs, and it was also painted by Hermes Performance, who's painted a lot of my cars. I also taught my mom how to drift in this car, and Mommy Dearest learned very quick, if you turn the wheel and pin the throttle, it'll do donuts one way or another. <laughs> fun memories in this car. Uh, OMP full suppression system as well. Here's my steering wheel that I've had on this car since day one. And uh, if I showed you guys the flux in it, you probably would hate me for driving with the steering wheel. You guys know how you can take a sample of your oil and ship it out to a lab and they'll test it and tell you what's going on? Did you know you can also do that with your hormones? If you're a guy who's noticed decreased energy as you age, then low testosterone may be the problem and you have the opportunity to take control of your health today. Don't skip ahead. I really want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Hone. Hone is a comprehensive hormone optimization clinic that helps men get their energy back. Focus, libido, and muscle mass by addressing low testosterone. Hone offers at home biomarker testing, in-depth physician video consults, and FDA approved medication delivered straight to your door. Did you know that men's testosterone levels have decreased substantially over generations? I mean, our father's generation had testosterone levels that were 25% higher than ours today. 30 million men in the US have low testosterone that is affecting their daily lives. And sadly, testosterone has been stigmatized and considered embarrassing by most men. Hone helps men get testing and treatment for low testosterone with real physicians, real science, and real FDA approved methods of treatment. The best way to know if you need to optimize your testosterone levels is to get tested. Hone allows you to do that from the comfort of your own home. This kit has everything that you need to get your samples collected and sent out for testing. For a limited time only, viewers get at home testing and a doctor consultation for only $45. Click the link in the description below or go to honehealth.com forward slash Amelia now. All right, now let's get back to the video. Now, I can't ever forget the people that helped me to get to where I am today. Now that I have my own shop, I don't rent spaces out of other people's garages, but I'm incredibly blessed and incredibly thankful, and, and I, I love this car, and I can't wait to go drifting again. So hopefully, hopefully, once I can figure out the overheating issue, we will be out there soon. But she still sounds really good, so as promised, I think we're ready to rev her. Oh, I also named her Envy because actually N and then V for non-vegetarian because she likes the meat, meat being tires. And then of course, Envy turned into the name NV because green with envy. Um, I promise not all the names are as well thought out as that. <laughs> um, but all right, let's start her, let's hear her. is more drifting in the new year i really want to focus on driving more not like i don't drive a lot already but specifically drifting more i have a lot of exciting parts coming for this car i have a new act clutch i have a new steering rack relocation kit i mean maybe we do that new 632 chevy big block naturally aspirated thousand horsepower motor that just came out in this but anyways uh likely we will be swapping the motor or at the very least rebuilding her but Either way, that means more drifting in the new year and I'm really excited for that, but enough on her. Let's hop over to the next car. And uh, shout out to you, TJ Hunt. These are his tire marks on my door. I told him to hit the door and mission accomplished. Tandeming, so much fun. 
It's actually so cool to be able to film this episode because this is probably the first time in a long time I have had all of my cars together. There would be a car right here. Rest in peace, poop turd. You OGs know, but we did do a heart transplant in order for the legacy to live, and we have her inside of the Impreza, but more on that later. Right now we're gonna talk about my 2007 Toyota Prius. Not a car that you would expect in a lineup of race cars, but she's basically a race car at this point. When I first tried getting this car, it was because the S14 had broken down and I couldn't afford repairs for her. I had pooped her, but it's a Subaru, so she kept breaking down. And what I really needed was just a reliable daily so that I can get to and from work and auditions. And it took every ounce of me to buy a Toyota Prius. And when I tried to buy her, I went to the bank and tried to get a $5,000 loan and actually got denied for it. Uh, and so I remember sitting outside of the bank crying in tears. Uh, feeling extremely helpless and it's kind of crazy to see all these cars here to realize where we've come But uh, we're still in the beginning stages. I drove Pranda. We call it Prana because she's a Honda swapped Prius You guys actually came up with the name and this swap was your idea. So I listened to you. This is a subscriber build I got a Honda K24 engine from JDM of California and paired her with a Civic SI six-speed transmission and immediately put an e Bay turbo on her and then some rods. Fortunately, my friends Boosted Boys came all the way out from Florida in order to help me build the Prius and they showed up with some Speed Factory sponsored supplied rods, Trom Pistons, a tune by the one and only PFI Speed on the Haltech, a K-tuned harness, a bunch of K-tuned accessories. I'll pop the engine in a second for you guys to see. We tried welding a Toyota half and a Honda half axle together and surprisingly it didn't break on the Honda side, it broke on the Toyota side. But because of Brent's tune accompanied with the ACT clutch that we have in this car, those axles didn't last long. And then Drive Shop, Shop came on board and supplied the new axles which have taken a lot of abuse so far. Also can't forget Drag Cartel showed up, the legend himself, with two cams for this car and helped assemble everything. So I had such a fun time this time last year assembling everything and hopefully we'll be taking her to a dealership soon because I have a check engine light that I want the dealership to take a look at. <laughs> Let me pop the hood real quick. So Mishimoto cooling, we got K-tuned throttle body, K-tuned valve cover, K-tuned fuel rails, K-tuned accessory drive kit, K-tuned harness, K-tuned shifter, K-tuned fuel pressure regulator, K-tuned hook this car up. And d Schwartz injectors. The idea of the Prando was to keep her stock looking. So you can see we have stock wheels and tires, stock suspension, basically blown out shocks, uh, but stock riot height, stock destroyed and beat body. And underneath where the old fuel tank was, we have a fuel cell that we run E85 on. So plans for Pronda? I don't know, comment below. We'll probably drag race her. I wanna do a fun video taking her to the dealership. And if all else fails, I think it might be fun to light this car on fire and have her go out in style. But comment below, let me know what you think. Inside is still relatively stock. There is power steering. Uh, because we removed the hybrid system, the brakes don't work very well because we didn't realize they were hybrid assisted. Um, um, and a K-tuned shifter. Everything else relatively stock. Ignore the wires down there. I don't have the two-step hooked up, so I hope you guys enjoyed those reps. <laughs> Next up, we have my best friend Sean's 1993 Nissan 240SX S13 with a twin turbo RB26 paired with a CD09 transmission. This technically isn't my car. I included it in the lineup because it was such a monumental period of the vlog where this was really the first start to finish swap that I did. The second episode I ever did on my YouTube channel was searching a bad TPS issue on this, which was causing the trans not to shift correctly. Now, this 
build actually has a really sweet story to it. Again, this is my best friend, Sean's car. This was the first car he ever had. And growing up, his dream was always to do, actually it was an RB25 Neo swap. I surprised him with the help of GDM of California to, with his dream engine. And he almost cried, it was so thoughtful. It was one of my favorite videos that I've ever done. And I know you guys really enjoyed it too. I surprised him with an RB26. And you know, jokes on me because he likes the stock appearance and like feel on things. So he wanted to keep the twin turbos on the car. We upgraded them to Turbinetics twin turbos, but having to fabricate a downpipe for those turbos with a steering column going straight through the middle of all the plumbing was kind of a nightmare, but it definitely taught me a lot. These Turbinetic turbos spool so quickly and you definitely feel a punch when it gets into power. This actually dynoed at about 500 tire, if I remember correctly. Pronda did 300 tire and Envy the S14 did about 500 tire as well. We actually lined this up against the Ferrari, it took the Ferrari, but more on that later. This is significantly lighter. On the dyno, we were limited by ignition, so upgraded to the Platinum Racing R35 coils. Dieschwerk 900cc injectors, and there is a Bosch 044 intake fuel pump as well. Um, if I didn't mention it already, it is an ACT six puck sprung clutch. Mishimoto cooling, Stancy Pants, fancy GIC magic coilovers, and the LMG T4 wheels. They look really dirty. They were in pretty bad condition when we got them, so we tried to spray paint them white knowing we were gonna powder coat them, but then we just never got around to powder coating them. So if Sean doesn't do that soon, that's on my list. He keeps the car with me because where he lives, he's scared that the cars are gonna get stolen, and it's just safer here in a gated community uh, with security. It is a vert, so we're talking about doing a cage in this soon. He has a super sick Nismo steering wheel and shifter. Next in tires, self-hacked together wiring harness. Um, one of the first things I did on this car too was doing the five lug conversion with the Z32 brakes front and rear and installing a manual shift pedal. Uh, this is a GK Tech short shifter. I have GK Tech rear arms on the car and the ECU is a Haltech 2500 tuned by Turbo Joe. I feel like this car needs race seats, it needs harnesses, it needs a roll bar, it needs a little bit more safety. Sean does drive this car all the time. He rips it and he enjoys it. Hopefully he'll be taking her out to the track whenever I go drifting or racing or whatever so that he can enjoy it more. But just being able to surprise him with the motor and seeing his response to the first start made me so happy. Like I really just want to surprise my friends with with builds and their dream stuff. You saw me surprise Sandy with the Honda Civic. That might not have been a dream car, but it, it, it was a car for his family. And also surprising him building his truck. I just love doing that type of stuff. One build I haven't done is a 2J. So I know there's a whole rivalry of RB26 versus 2JZ. So let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'll do one down the line. Maybe I'll put a 2J in the Mustang. Um, but anyways, so let's fire up. We also nicknamed the S13 Cash Money. I don't remember why. I think just cause she ate a lot of money at the time. <laughs> All right, let's start her. surprising Sean with this car uh, after a while I did miss working on my own car uh, so then I had to figure out what build was going to be next with Envy I was on the show called Netflix's fastest car I was on season 2 episode 4 if you guys haven't seen it yet that made me fall in love with drag racing uh, before I'd only drifted uh, I really wanted to get into drag racing and I had converted Envy into a drag car for the race, but at the end of the day, she was my drift car. I had to convert her back to drift. And at that time I figured I really just need to buy my own drag car. So I bought my grandmother's 79 and view of Regal. to pop a hood on this car. This is the most sendent build that we've ever done. This was once a six liter iron block, but it is now a Texas Speed 408 stroker assembled and machined by Millennium Motorsports. T56 manual transmission and RHS LS3 heads. One of my favorite things about this build is the fact that she revs to 8,000 RPM and probably higher if we would let her. Uh, thanks to Comp Cam's mechanical rollers, we have Comp Cam's big ol' nasty cam. We have billet rockers on her. Massive 
6566 twin turbos dumped out the hood. All the tubing was supplied by Motion Raceworks. They even supplied us with these valve cover breathers that work perfectly with these comp cam billet valve covers. And Motion Raceworks icebox. We're running air to water on this car. There is a massive air to water turbinetics intercooler in the very front of it. Definitely blocking the radiator, but on quarter mile, not too worried about that. <laughs> D-Shorks 1000 cc injectors, we're running on the 85, fast fuel rails, D-Shorks fuel pressure regulator, and I think we dyed on around 8900 tire. I don't fully remember because I just remember being disappointed that we didn't hit the 1000 horsepower number that we were shooting for. The motor's good for about 1300. Uh, we're also running a Holley accessory drive kit, Holley boost control solenoid, and Holley engine management on the car. Full QA1 drag suspension, a quick performance 9 inch rear end, Wilwood brakes all the way around, weld wheels with a backyard beadlock kit on the rear, <laughs> and Mickey Thompson tires. We're still in the small tire class, we're running a 275 in the rear, and thanks to VFN we have have a front bumper, rear bumper, and fiberglass hood. The hood we will be installing soon and the turbos will just kind of poke out and it's gonna look sick. Perky seat, Summit Racing harnesses. There's a lot of wiring kind of everywhere in here. Holly's insane looking dash display. A sicky handbrake that I use for staging. Also, Motion Raceworks applied the steering column and wheel and uh, also added a clutch pedal in this car as well. So. A lot of work has been done on this. We got it ready for our Holly LS Fest this past year. This car is the reason that we met Sandy. I was following Holly's Instagram and I had seen that the LS Fest a year prior, um, these wild guys had done an LS swap on their lunch truck the night before Holly Fest, got everything together, slept pistons and rods and everything on the car, took her out there and sent her. And Holly was reposting it. And after I saw that, I was like, these guys are perfect. I reached out to them to rent a shop space out of them at the time in order to help doing this build. That's how I met Sandy. And Sandy and I have been working together ever since, just doing cool shit on the builds. The update on what's going on with Mimi, I named her Mimi after my grandmother, is that she's solid. I would daily her if I could but I can't because these, these little arms can't handle the manual steering box. So I'm gonna be doing a power steering box here soon. Maybe daily her and drive her around a little bit. She runs, she rips, she's perfect. And I'll probably be taking her out to the drag strip soon, hopefully. Mimi will be my practice car, assuming we don't take the motor out and use her for NV, while we build the Mustang, because the Mustang's also gonna be a crazy manual drag build as well. But more on that later. Also, I don't know if I mentioned, but she has an ACT clutch in her. This car I really learned drag racing on. Eventually, maybe we'll turn this into a burnout car. We'll sell her. I don't know. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Lots of great memories in this. It's really kind of cool to see what I've been able to do with my grandma's car. But let me start her and I'll show you guys what she really sounds like. memories of Sandy was my first impression of Sandy and that was him leaning over Mimi with a beer in his hand a cigarette in his mouth just tuning the carburetor we're gonna get the car running right and in no time Sandy did it Sandy is a wizard I call him the horsepower whisperer and uh, it's been a great time ever since just building cars when pooped her died may she rest in peace because Alex Troy money shifted her on a top speed run that engine was actually shipped straight from Japan it was a version 7 EJ207 STI engine that was stock at the time. It came with forged internals from Japan originally, and then those didn't last long. Thank you, Alex, if you're watching this. But we took the heart, we took the motor out of Poop Turd and completely built her. And that is what we're actually running inside of my 2000 Impreza. This is a dream car. I have always wanted an Impreza build. And I love this because it has my dream engine, dream everything, and I can't wait to start driving her. We've named her Tomato. No, I hope she never becomes the flying tomato. But Tomato, when I first bought her, it was a clean title because I really wanted a straight frame come to find out that there was actually some damage on the car that the previous owner never reported. So that kind of sucked to find out, but we got that all that fixed out. The body's really damaged. I didn't really care so much about that. Literally driving the car 
with the owner passenger with me, it got rod knock on the original engine. I bought the car anyways, I could tell the kid needed money and I just wanted the chassis to build it anyways. So I paid full price, didn't try nickel and dime him and we ended up just blowing it to the moon with a nitrous bottle anyways. This is a 22B style six over crest wide body. I always love the rally look. Painted in a Porsche GT3 RS lava orange. NK super wide 18 by 10 squared all the way around wheels with the next and sticky sur4 tires there is a little bit of a rubbing happening predominantly in the rear so i got to figure out what i'm going to do i might just camber in the wheels a little bit or do a little bit of cutting or something we'll figure it out this car was my first time ever cutting and installing fenders i cut the fenders and painted the whole car alongside lewis over at Hermes performance I love this car. I do not think it could have come out any better. I have all new interior on the way. I have a roll bar on the way. I have harnesses and seats. Full interior coming soon. But let me talk about the engine because that's really the exciting part. This is everything I could ever want in a Subaru. This is my dream Subaru. It's got a built DJ207 from JD to California, shipped from Japan with an STI six-speed transmission. It's built with Supertech pistons, valve train, BC rods, machined by Millennium, and I was there to assemble it with him, which was super exciting. I do want to paint the intake manifold on her because she looks a little crusty, but aside from that, still kept the top mount in a cooler. Might do front mount in the future. Mishimoto cooling. Eyewire harness and DCCD controller. What I love about this Subaru is that it's basically 2007 STI. It has an STI trans, STI diff, STI arms, knuckles, brakes, everything from the unibody down. And if that weren't enough, I paired her with fuel coilovers to really take the handling up a whole nother level. Now, one of the coolest things about my Subaru is the fact that she is bar certified. Look at that right there, bar certification. I don't know what kind of horsepower she could put down yet because we haven't tuned her. Hopefully, once I get the interior and the roll bar installed, we will be taking her to the dyno where we can actually see what kind of numbers we'll be putting out. I'm hoping a conservative 350. I'm not asking for a lot. It's a lightweight car. So, and I also want it to be reliable. <laughs> we have the stock VF30 turbo on her, a nice sounding exhaust, and I just want a reliable daily. I, j I just need to drive the Subaru for a little bit and then we can turn up the boost. <laughs> All right. Let's hear her. I'm not gonna rev tomato too much because she doesn't have a tune. Probably be fine, but I don't want to risk anything. And next up is the car that you are all probably most familiar with. And the car that kind of changed everything for me. And it's my 2020 C8 Corvette. I bought this car as a customer two years ago. I paid full price for it. It wasn't sponsored whatsoever. I flew to Kentucky to go pick this car up. And I recall very vividly saying that I was going to leave it stock. And then from there on the drive home, stopped in Texas at Pite's Performance's shop where it didn't last long not modding her until we hooked her up with a bottle of nitrous and took her to the drag strip. And I fell in love with trying to just make her go faster and faster that when I was heading home from Texas, when the world was kind of shutting down, all I could think about is what we could do next. What now? And Pites and I at the time were working on doing a twin turbo kit. I was calling him all the time with some ideas. He was kind of working on it. It's his kit. I'm just happy to have had my hand in it at the time. And the first prototype Pites Performance twin turbo kit was installed on my Corvette. <laughs> so I ended up driving back to Texas. We put the twin turbo kit on. We took her to the drag strip and we just kept pushing her from there. And eventually we were able to break the world record for not only the highest horsepower, but the fastest to see a Corvette in a quarter mile. And I don't currently have that time anymore. It was taken from me about two weeks ago, but honestly, I've just been enjoying driving my nine second daily because when I was chasing all the records, it was constantly down because we we're constantly upgrading different parts. So I got a little burnt down. I'm just enjoying driving my car right now, but we'll be back out there soon. We're working on a trans controller for her just to make sure that we can really get those two, three shifts dialed and so that we can control more line pressure as well. And I digress. Um, let me pop the hatch and let's start talking about what's actually done to her. 
And it, it's quite obvious that this whole livery was inspired by the C8R. And this car was also one of the top five cars ever recreated in Forza, which I thought was nuts when I found out. In here we have a 6.2 liter LT2 built by Texas Speed. Uh, in the back, we actually mounted the turbos back here because I didn't want them to get heat soaked in the engine bay. And honestly, it just looks so sick back here. We utilize an X-pipe because I just believe all V8 should have an X-pipe and Pites was gonna do that already. Uh, so it worked out perfectly. Everything is wrapped by heat shield products. We noticed a huge temperature drop when heat protecting everything. Twin precision mirrored 6466 turbos. Datsun prototype clutches assembled by Sissio Performance. We have an auxiliary fuel cell that was once a Dietrich surge tank that we fabricated into a fuel cell to run secondary fuel with Holly 220 pound injectors also controlled by a Holly Dominator. We have a carbon PTR intake manifold integrated by Lingenfelter. They say it's good for about 50 pounds of boost, so we'll find out. We're running about 30 right now, and so far she's handled up great. We have Cook's headers. We have a Crawford Racing plug and play harness and uh, KW coilovers. These are the club sports. I'll be installing the V5 soon. I was the first C8 Corvette with the aftermarket KW V3s and then the club sports. And I was so excited to have been in Invited to be a part of that launch. We're on Forge Line beadlock wheels, skinny in the fronts, fatties in the back with Mickey Thompson tires. We have G-Force axles. Pites and X Engineering created a box that they use to trick basically a bunch of the sensors in order to be able to tune the car. We don't run in a secondary throttle body. We just have one box that is super easy to use. Well, technically two. This is a prototype thing we're running right now. But just one box, it's super simple, nothing crazy. It tricks the sensors in order for the car to be happy without having to run a secondary throttle body and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm really happy with what we have. And I was also part of launch for the Z06 when that came out because Chevrolet recognized everything we were doing with this car and never in a million years would I have expected that to happen. I was on the national commercial for the Z06 that aired during the World Series. I am on the Chevrolet Z06 documentary that's live on their website. And I was also a part of a panel with Taj Jukter and Justin Bell, Andrew Schneider, the director of the documentary and so many other amazing talented people. The chief engineer of Corvette was sitting there and thank you to be a part of that is something that I'll never forget. And you guys saw something in me that truthfully, I didn't even know any of this was gonna come with the car when I bought it. And I don't think anyone watching did. I love this car. Don't tell the other cars, but I think it's one of my favorite in the fleet. I am really looking for the Z06. And I hope I'm not forgetting anything. This is a lot to rattle off the top of my head with all of these cars, but you guys go back and watch some of the old episodes. Everything is all detailed in those episodes and you kind of see the progression of where we started to where we are today. And uh, we died on her at a little over 1200 to the tires, so about 14 1500 crank. I love this car. I have so many, so many, so many memories with this car in just the two years of ownership. And her name is Phoenix because she caught on fire and rose from the ashes. She caught on fire at a road racing event over at Button Willow. One of the oil return lines chafed on the bumper and unfortunately burst open when I hit a curbstone and I was on fire for a full lap before they flagged me to pull over and my small fire extinguisher wasn't enough to put the fire out and Dan from Hoonigan pulled his Miata over on the side of the racetrack, grabbed a dry chemical fire extinguisher, ran over to my car and put the fire out and Dan, I am so forever grateful for you for doing that. The damage wasn't as bad as we were expecting it to be. More lines were burnt than we were hoping but honestly it could have been so much worse but she rose from the ashes, took the world record at the time and that's why we named her Phoenix. This car was also the reason that I got the billboard on Sunset Boulevard with Motul Oils. And I had been running Motul in all my cars previously, and this was the first major deal that I had signed with an aftermarket company, which was huge. You know, right now I'm enjoying the car. We'll probably go out there soon to try to take that record back. It's only a matter of time. In the meantime, Maybe we should talk about the other car we're gonna be trying to uh, set our own personal records with. I'm talking about the Mustang. <laughs> but first, I'll take any excuse to start Phoenix and to rev her. So let's fire her up. I love that this car still has the new corset to it. All right. Now, we 
we've pushed the Stingray really far, but I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on a Z06 because I'm just a sucker for naturally aspirated V8 flat plank cranks, I mean. So this is my Mustang, my S550 Mustang, also known as Trader, because I feel like a trader whenever I drive her. I have always wanted to do a Coyote build. This is a five liter Coyote. So I'm really curious to see how far I can push this chassis and what exactly I could do. Sandy's a big Ford guy, I thought I'd give it a chance. It's got a 60 manual that will probably be ripping out anyways. Right now I am sourcing a motor and forced induction. We have a really sick transmission that I will be unveiling to you soon by Tick Performance. And uh, once we get all the parts in, we get everything figured out, we'll be starting this build. I am ready to start this ASAP, but at least for now, she is stock AF and soon will be not stock AF. This build, I know I see comments asking what happened to it, what happened to it. I've been daily driving the Mustang right now. And once I get all the parts for the engine and decide what we're doing with the forced induction, then we're gonna start tearing absolutely everything apart. But I figured there's no point in just having the car sit with an engine outside of it. We may as well just wait for everything to, to get in. So it's been sitting in the sun and that was very hot. You know what? It's a stock Mustang. Do you really need to hear it? But by the time I'm done with her, we're talking at least 2,000 horsepower with a manual H-pattern transmission. <laughs> now, it has always been a dream of mine to own an Italian supercar. And I say Italian because I do believe that the CA Corvette is an American supercar. I took air delivery of my Ferrari about a month ago and it came in in a crate via helicopter. It was one of the coolest delivery videos I had ever done. But for the most part, she's stock. I have some really exciting plans for her. Butter in the Rosso red, carbon ceramic brakes, matching red calipers, black and red interior with the race seats, carbon fiber steering wheel. And uh, the first mod that I did to this car was prototyping a one of one Hartford Racing performance exhaust system. Utilizing an X pipe with more exhaust travel and you know, with the help of Sandy, you know, I welded my very own exhaust. Not only do I think I have the best sounding sea Corvette in the world, I do believe that I have the best sounding Ferrari 458 in the world as of now. Plans for this car, I don't really think I'm gonna be doing too much performance wise. It's a flat plane crank, it already has a high compression ratio, it's a 4.5 liter V8, that sounds amazing. I had thought about doing ITVs on the car, but I just don't think tuning is there. I need to do a little bit more research on that. But what I really want to do, and what I'm most excited about, is the Liberty Walk kit that I ordered from Japan a couple months ago that should be arriving any day now. I'm doing the Silhouette GT kit, and I'm so hyped on doing a wide body on a Ferrari, and I'm going to get sick wheels with it. We're going to get a big wing. It's going to sound sick, and I'm going to just have fun with her. And of course, I will be road racing her a little bit as well. Enough talking about the 458. If you guys have names for the car, comment below. But in the meantime, let's hear the new Hartford exhaust. The cool thing about all this is that I feel like most of these cars have a purpose. You know, this is going to be the super sick wide body Italian supercar. We're going to have the American manual drag car. We have the Corvette C8, the, one of the fastest of its kind. I have a rally Subaru that's also going to be streetable. I have a drag 79 Buick Regal, that muscle car feel. Technically, I don't have that one. I have a very random sleeper of a Prius. And then I also have my drift car. And again, it's really all thanks to you guys. If you guys enjoyed this, please do share the video. And if this video does 100,000 likes, I will drag race every single one of these cars side by side. If you want to support the channel, hardfordltd.com to cop some merch. And tomorrow I jump on a plane to head over to Cletus McFarland's 2.4 hours of Le Mans, where I will be racing alongside NASCAR Cup driver and NBC host, Parker Klingerman. We will be co-drivers and we will be taking home that W. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for then. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Ikuro, we out here. Bye. <laughs>